Johnny Two Face here, back with another reaction video. This time, reacting to Ten Creepy Celtic Myths by by All Time Tens. Now, um, been a long time since I reacted to any top tens, and especially All Time Tens, which is again another great channel for top tens, especially based about history. And um, and um, just a quick side note: um, if you've seen my reactions to the um, my reactions to the uh, Celt the Celtic history series by Kings and Generals. I didn't I didn't realise which I should have checked that the Anglo Saxon invading Britain Britain and attacking the Celts. I should have realised that was the last episode in that series. So um excuse me. So um so I thought I thought if I react to something like, you know, based on Celtic myths, I thought it would be a nice little roundup up be before I, before, like, you know, I finish reacting to anything about Celt Celtic history for a while until I deem it necessary to start again, but who knows. So, the usual disclaimer, because this top ten is technically history based, my usual disclaimer react to anything historical if I don't show so much what is considered a proper reaction it is probably obvious I don't know much about the subject at hand and if I do know anything sorry lozenge um, I'll most likely pause the video give my input or ask any curious questions which hopefully should be answered in the comments below so without further ado the link to the original video in the description down below please go and subscribe to top all time tens there are another brilliant top 10, 10 channel who make, make I think, in my opinion, decent top 10 lists. So, um, so, so this is probably not in order, just bear that in mind. So, without rambling on too long, let's get that part on the screen and let's get into this. Ten Creepy Celtic Folk Tales. Mm -hmm. Number 10, Darug Dua. Dua Dua. Given his name, which literally means red blood sucker. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Darug Dua. Sources, Irish Central, Celtic Root Symbol, Sage Hub Pages. Okay. Given his name, which literally means red blood sucker, it's easy to guess what the Darug so Dua is a... feared for. According to the Celtic legend, the demon was originally an Irish woman who was known throughout the country for her outstanding beauty. So, basically, an... A gay Gaelic vampire. As what usually happens in these sorts of legends, she mm. fell in love with a man her father didn't approve of. Of course. Instead, he forced his daughter to marry a rich man, who turned out to be a real nightmare for the. Forced marriages should be abolished worldwide. The poor girl. He tortured her both psychologically and physically. He beat and wounded her for his own sick pleasure, and even if she wanted to, she couldn't escape. Poor her woman. Locked her in a tower. Essentially, all her pain turned into a burning rage that consumed her to death. In death, however, she found freedom. Following her quick and modest burial near Strongbow's tree in Waterford, she came back one. Sounds like to me, her father definitely did not care for her. Night to seek revenge. She killed her mm. father and her husband by sucking their blood until they dropped dead. Since then, the Darug Dua rises. Usually, I'm not an nasty person, but they had it coming. Once a year, to seduce and kill men mm. by draining their blood. Honestly, can you blame her? No. Number nine, the Merrow. The Merrow. In folklore, the Merrow are stunning sea creatures, particularly okay. charming, hence dangerous, for humans. But if you're thinking of the Little Mermaid, forget about that. Merrow have very little in common with mermaids. Sure, the name derives from the Irish word moor, meaning sea, but for one mm. thing, Merrow don't have tails, but rather human-like legs. Although they do have huge, flat feet and webbed fingers. Fair enough, together with their cape, these characters... Slightly off topic, but um... I forgot to mention that the very little I know about Celtic mythology is that the Celtic pantheon, and I don't know if the Celtic pantheon that I know about stretches across all, all of um, all of the Celtic tribes, but um, the only name that I've ever remembered is the Tuatha Danann. Characteristics make them incredible mm. swimmers. 
Once Amaru leaves the water in favor of the land, she must abandon her appearances in favor of a human form. Wow. This usually happens after a man finds one cape and hides it, forcing the Meru to marry him. The pact is broken once a creature finds her cape, which can happen after days, mm. weeks, or even years. At that point, nothing matters more than returning to the sea. The Meru won't be able to resist it and will rejoin with her element, leaving behind everything, including the husband and children. Okay. Number 8. The Kelpie Oh, so I've seen, I've heard about this. Little pony, wet and cold, that's looking for a bit of company. Well, don't be fooled by his appearance. As the Celtic legend goes, the Kelpie is in fact a monster. It can take multiple shapes, but usually it disguises itself as a horse, traveling around Ireland to lure unfortunate souls. Wow. With its pony-like guise, the Kelpie mostly prey on women and children. It tricks them into riding on it, and as soon as they jump on its back, it will drag them into the closest river or stream it can find. But it's not only tiny horses you should fear, but handsome men too. Oh, well, okay. that's a breakthrough. Seriously though, as a shapeshifter, the demon can turn itself into a good looking mm. man. The ultimate goal is the same, luring its victims into okay. its arms to either drown them or eat them. There is, however, a way to stop a Kelpie in its horse form, getting a hold of its bridle. It will give you control over it, but also over any other Kelpie too. Mm. Number seven, Lian and Shi. Lian and Shi are another kind of creature that are not what they seem. In fact, you would think a beautiful lady who inspires poets and musicians mm. has nothing demonic in herself, and you'd be wrong. Yes, Lian and Shi can be considered as the Irish version of the Muses. Yes, okay. the name literally translates as Fairy Lover, and yes, they do help writers, musicians, and other types of artists to bring their creations to life. Wow. However, they're also responsible for the death of these creative minds. But how? First, they make the artists fall in love with them, nourishing their intelligence and talent to the point their poor soul wow. becomes addicted to it. That's when the fairy lover will abruptly leave them, causing them to fall into a terrible depression from which they would never recover. Eventually, Damn. they either die of desperation or they'll take their own life. The she then swoop in and take the lifeless body to their lair. They would feast on the blood to fuel their own immortality. Number 6. Dullahan You must have oh, wow. heard of the Headless Horseman at least yeah. once. I mean, this supernatural creature has been the subject of legends, books, movies, and video games. What you might not know is that the character actually comes from an Irish myth. Known as Gun Kia, yeah, I've heard of it. head in Irish, the Dullahan literally means dark Sorry, what was that? Irish myth. Books, movies, and video games. What you might not know is that the character actually comes from an Irish myth. Known as Gun Kian, without the head in Irish, the Dullahan wow. literally means dark man. According to the many legends around it, a human dies every time the Dullahan stops or when he calls their name. In other versions of the myth, the horseman throws buckets of blood at people as he passes. Mm. One thing is for sure, you come across his path, you're dead. The Dullahan has, however, a weak point, gold. It is believed to drive the creatures away. So similar okay. to keeping garlic around your neck to keep vampires away, having a small piece of gold with you, even just a single gold pin, will do the job. Number five, Banshee. Oh, this is the most Christ famous. Can turn you into a monster. Ask Banshees. A Banshee from the Irish word Benshi, woman of the mounds, is one of the most famous Celtic legends. Its genesis is commonly associated with the death of a loved one, after which an inconsolable mm. woman turns into a female spirit from too much wailing wow. and shrieking. In Irish mythology, the Banshee usually wears red or green with long, disheveled hair. Her wailing, screaming, or lamentations at night are believed to foretell the death of a member of the family of the person who hears her wail three times. Wow. As if it wasn't enough, some legends report the Banshee traveling alongside the Dullahan, whipping the horse with a human spinal cord. What a lovely image. Hmm. Number four, Fovera. According to Irish folklore, the demonic world is not war-free. For example, the Fovera, who are believed to pose a threat to the people of Ireland, are clashing with the Tuatha de Danann, a good-spirited race. Why are the Fovera dangerous? Etymologically speaking, the name means demons from below the sea, and their leader, Balor. As I said, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation, but the way I heard it said was Tuhad Tidanen. It's considered the demonic god of death. He hmm. could have been the god of spring, but no. Hang on, let me run that back. Fovera dangerous. Etymologically speaking, the name means demons from below the sea, and their leader, Balor, is considered the demonic Balor. god of death. He could have been the god of spring, but no. Here mm. we go with another deathly creature. Anyways, mythology reports that Balor has a single gigantic leg and one huge deadly eye. Literally deadly, as he can kill anyone just by staring at them. Humanity will be safe only when Tuatha de Danann will defeat Balor and his father army. Until then, the demons will keep preying on people. Number 3. Slaw Depending on the legend, Slaw can be many things, from demon spirits to more conventional ghosts, bearing the souls of dead sinners. One thing is for sure, they are scary creatures that hunt down people. 
These, let's call them dead sinners, come back as malicious spirits going from village to village, usually in packs, tormenting all the people they come across. Their favorite prey is older dying people as they are rather easy mm. to catch. When a slaw senses you are trying to kill it, it will take your soul. So wow. how do you stop them? Now, since they're believed to come from the west, the most effective trick seems to be keeping the west facing window shut at all times. Number two, the questing beast. The questing beast is mostly known for appearing in the Arthurian legend and many French ancient okay. texts. It's been the subject of quests by famous knights such as King Pellinor, Sir Palamedes, and Sir Percival. This said, according to Celtic myth, the questing beast is obviously not a cute little puppy. Rather, the creature's dangerous nature also reflects on its features. The head and neck of a snake, the body of a leopard, the haunches of a lion, and the feet of a heart. Someone must have hated that poor fellow. It is mm. believed the beast is constantly crying, which, by the way, appears to sound like the bark of 30 dogs. Or, to say it in a fancy, cultural way, a barking like 30 couple hounds questing! Hence the name. Number 1. Carothanek. The name of okay. the big demonic snake defeated by St. Patrick himself couldn't be okay. simple, could it? So now we get to deal with Carothanek. I genuinely have no idea how to pronounce this. Jokes aside, Carol Thanek marked an important step in St. Patrick's okay. life. Legend goes that St. Patrick has the merit of banishing snakes out of Ireland, before the 7th century in fact. It's believed the Emerald Isle was instead filled with those demonic creatures. But standing on Craig Patrick Mountain, the saint expelled all the serpents out of the island, except okay. for one. Carol Thanek, the fire spitter, the mother of the devil, slid down the mountain and initially escaped the fury of the saint. However, Patrick chased it down on the back of the fastest horse in the country. The quest wasn't easy, as he had no water to quench his thirst along the way. Carol Thanek spit fire as it fled and poisoned every well it passed. But in the end, thanks to his faith that kept him away from the poisoned water, St. Patrick reached the monster at Hawk's Rock. There, he fought the beast and dragged it in the ocean, where he left a swell known as Hawk's Well. Hmm. That was 10 creepy Celtic folk tales. Which one did you find the most creepy? Which one did you find the most interesting? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, And that'll do it. This has been an interesting top 10 and um, and there's been some interesting folk tales. Obviously they're mostly from Ireland but um, I'm surprised on there it wasn't um, I think it, I apologize if I'm pronouncing this wrong but I think it's like Coo Cullen, the giant of Irish myth. Basically, he starts as a normal man and then goes into a Hulk and turns into a Hulk and giant. But as I said, I probably got that wrong. So, um, so anyway, if you like this reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next.